Pray, be seated. The bereaved Malinga family, the first lady, Dr. Amai Yoksilem Nangagwa, the Vice President, Honorable General Retired, Dr. C. Jiren Chwenga, and Amai Chwenga. The Vice President, Honorable Colonel Retired, Cassidy Mahadi. Minister of Defense, Honorable OCZ, Mchinguri Kashiri. The Minister of State for Provincial Affairs and Devolution, Arare Metropolitan Province, Honorable Charles Tavengwa. Other Honorable Ministers and Deputy Ministers who are here. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Advocate Jeff Mdenda, President of the Senate, uh, my Mabel Memorich Nomona, the Chief Justice, Honorable Justice Luke Malawa, as represented by Justice Paddington Garway, President of the National Chiefs Council, Honorable Senator Mchana Kumalo, Politburo, and Central Committee members who are here. The Chief Secretary to the President Cabinet, Dr. Mishak Spanda. Chairman of the Public Service Commission, Dr. Vincent Ungwe. Commander Zimbabwe Defense Forces, General Philip Valerio Swanda. Service Chiefs, Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Mayor of the City of Harare, His Worship, Councillor Ian Makone, Veterans of the Liberation Struggle, Senior government officials, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends. Once again, we gather at our revered and sacred national shrine to inter our decorated nationalist, brave, courageous, and champion of human rights. Comrade Joshua Teke Malinga. He was a leading voice in both ruling parties and PF and in government on disability issues, inclusivity, and a broad based empowerment. He passed on in Bulawayo on Friday, 8th September, following a brave fight against cancer. He was 79 years old. As a senator,
Politburo member and my special advisor in government, Comrade Malinga was instrumental in making sure that both the policies of the Revolutionary Party and government were alive and sensitive to the interests of persons with disabilities irrespective of gender, age, race, and social position. The late Comrade Malinga was born on 28th April 1944 in Filawusi. Our late national hero is testimony to the fact that disability need not diminish one's ability and life chances. Despite becoming a victim of polio at the tender age of two, he went on to lead an illustrious career during the liberation struggle and after our country's independence in 1980. He was never deterred by his circumstances. On behalf of the Revolutionary Party, ZAN-PF, government and the people of Zimbabwe, and indeed, on my own behalf, I wish to once again extend my heartfelt condolences to the bereaved Malinga family on this sword loss. I urge you to find solace in the knowledge that the nation joins you in mourning his sad and untimely demise. His defense and unflinching love for our beloved motherland, Zimbabwe, so the late Komen Malinga placed under any and illegal sanctions by the West. We are calling well-deserved honor and a befitting farewell as we lay him to rest alongside his compatriots here at the National Heroes Echo. We will forever cherish the role he played in the struggle for our independence and towards the development of our nation by championing the cause of special interests groups in public policy and inclusive national development. My dear countrymen and women, the life of the late national hero Joshua Keteke Malinga personifies selflessness, sacrifice, and putting one's country ahead of all else. Despite the disability that befell him in his childhood, he joined the Jaros Jury Association at the tender age of 13. He was also a youth activist against the oppressive Rhodesian settler regime under the tutelage of comrades Joshua Mkamugo Nyongolo Nkomo, Nyson Kuchegutle Ndovu, and W. Tingwenya, among others, under the Southern Rhodesia African National Congress. In 1961, he moved to Nguboyenja and Mzilikazi, and he joined the National Democratic Party following the banning of the Southern Rhodesia African National Congress. The settler regime in line with Ian Douglas Smith's Never in a Thousand Years Declaration, kept banning nationalist movements to thwart all efforts towards majority rule. The Rhodesian imaginations failed to dampen 
the determination of the nationalists who formed successor movements to fight for the independence, democracy, and freedom we are enjoying today. The late national hero, Comrade Malinga, became a member of the Zimbabwe African People's Union, ZAPU. People's Caretaker Council, PCC, and the Patriotic Front, Zimbabwe African People's Union, PF Zapu. In 1975, in 1979, he held senior executive positions in the Kwavalanda branch of PF Zapu. He was later instrumental in organizing PF Zapu branches and the cells in Richmond and Lookout Masuku district. My fellow mourners, the struggle to liberate Zimbabwe was not a walk in the park. As the racist Rhodesian regime brutalized the black majority to preserve their dominancy. Democracy did not come cheaply as many of our comrades lost life and limb in the grueling struggle for our independence. It was the liberation movements, PF, ZAPU, and ZANU, that brought democracy, independence, and freedom and democracy in our motherland. Today, the same forces that orchestrated and supported the incarceration, maiming, and killing of our cadres for demanding independence and majority rule come to us masquerading as champions of democracy. We will never, never forget the past. Day and night, they continue in their devious attempts to create chaos in our country so that they can loot our resources. No, no. Under the watch of the Second Republic, this will not happen. As a sovereign nation, we will not allow interference in our internal affairs, we say no. Nika inovakwa igotongwa igonamatiwa neve nevayo. Elize lakiwa livuswe likulele kelwe nabani kazivalo. Hallelujah. After independence in 1980, the late national hero, Comrade Malinga, continued to serve his party and government with unwavering commitment, dedication, persistence, and consistency to uplift the lives of Zimbabweans, especially persons with disabilities. During the period of the Unity Accord of 1987, he was elected the Vice Chairman of the Lookout Masuk District, holding the position until 1994, when he was elected Treasurer of Bulawayo Province. He later served as Vice Chairman of Bulawayo Province until his elevation to the Zan PF Central Committee. He distinguished himself as a man who believed in a leadership trial and card on quality service delivery in the local governance sector. In this regard, our late national hero, Comet Joshua T. Kemalinga, served as deputy mayor of the city of Lawayo during the period 1992 to 1993 
stand as mayor for two terms over the period 1993 to 1995. He used this position to shift spatial and development planning in the city towards a more disability friendly and accessible built environment in Ulawayo. Newly elected councillors and management in councils are exhorted to emulate the leadership and sacrifices that were made by luminaries such as our national hero who realized notable milestones as an executive mayor of Bulawayo. Newly elected councillors must leave no stone unturned in addressing the main challenges within our local authorities. Our citizens deserve quality service delivery and the public officials must deliver. Corruption, dereliction of duty and disregard for the concerns of our people there is no room in our governance system. Comrades and friends, in 1999, the Latin National Hero Comrade Malinga was appointed member of the Constitutional Review Committee and elevated to be a member of the ZAN PF Politburo and a Deputy Secretary for the disabled and disadvantaged. In 2006, he was appointed member of the Senate, becoming a member of the Select Committee of Parliament on the Constitution Making Process, COPAC. In recognition of his passion for the cause of the disabled and the disadvantaged in our society, the Light Comrade Malinga was elevated to become the Secretary for the Disabled and Disadvantaged in the Politburo, a position he held until his passing on. In 2017, I appointed him to the Ministerial Post or Special Advisor on National Disability Issues in the Office of the President and the Cabinet. Despite being unwell for some time, the late Comrade Malinga was always available to serve his constituency and the country as a whole. He was always committed to participating in both party and government programs. At the international level, our late national hero championed the cause of persons with disabilities and the disadvantaged. He traveled extensively around the world to engage in debates, conferences, symposia, and workshops. Similarly, he mobilized the resources for advancing the protection of the environment, progressive political, social, and environmental issues, particularly in relation to persons with disabilities. In recognition of his immense leadership capabilities, he was appointed advisory board member of the African Development Bank. He was appointed secretary general and founder member of the Pan-African Federation of the Disabled. United Nations expert on disability and human rights, advisor the Secretary General of the United Nations, and twice elected the President of the worldwide body of persons with disabilities. He sat on several locally and international based social and business organizations. The late national hero Comrade Malinga graduated with degrees in accounting as well as disability, psychology, and development studies. 
He contributed to the body of knowledge through various publications relating to disability and development. In recognition of his sterling contribution to the well-being of society, he was honored with several local international awards. These include membership of the Golden Key International Honor Society, the George Bush Medal Award for Outstanding Achievements in the Promotion of Human Rights for Disabled People Worldwide, the Global Family Award by the International Association for Volunteer Effort, and at one time, Zimbabwe Businessman of the Year. This is Malinga. He was awarded the Rotary Foundation International Paul Harris Fellowship in appreciation of his role in tangible and significant furtherance of better understanding and friendly relations among peoples of the world. My dear fellow mourners, comrades and friends, the life achievements of our late national hero, Comrade Malinga, were underpinned by a fervent desire to protect and defend the rights of persons with disabilities, locally and globally. For him, disability spurred an exceptional life and career, including courageously participating and sharing the risks of nationalistic politics and in the struggle for our independence. I urge us as a nation to take a leaf from the illustrious life of our late national hero, Comrade Malinga. Let us all uphold the values of honest hard work, patriotism, integrity, and loyalty to our motherland, Zimbabwe. Further, I challenge persons with disabilities in particular, and the nation at large, to never allow ourselves to be objects of charity and sympathy. We are all differentially abled. Let us therefore rally our energy, our skills, capabilities and competencies to build, modernize and industrialize our motherland, Zimbabwe. On its part, my government will continue to ensure the accelerated implementation of our national disability policy. Under the Second Republic, all persons of our beloved motherland, Zimbabwe, have a role to play in developing, modernizing, desolizing our country. Together, we shall succeed. My fellow mourners, countrymen and women, let us stand firm and remain vigilant against those who want to distract us from our national development efforts. Violence and divisive narratives have no place in our country, Zimbabwe. The Second Republic is determined to entrench and deepen the culture of peace, culture of love, culture of unity, and the culture of harmony. This is what our heroes and heroines died for. We are on an irreversible course towards modernization and industrialization and economic growth, building upon the remarkable achievements we are witnessing in all our economic sectors. During this 2023-2024 summer cropping season, I challenge the nation and stakeholders in the agriculture sector to consolidate our country's food security and sovereignty. We must continue to be a nation which is able to feed itself. 
the presidential input support programs are being availed to our people. No one and no place must be left behind in the allocation and distribution of agricultural inputs as we scale up production and productivity across all agriculture subsectors. Further, I urge our farmers to take advantage of extension services, particularly given the projected rainfall fluctuations that the region may experience in the coming season. Finally, to the late national hero and my special advisor, Comrade Joshua Tekemalinga, I say go well, son of the soil. Go well, our human rights champion. You are an epitome of perseverance, determination, hope, and triumph over adversity. Rest in eternal peace, assured that your sacrifice and life struggle for a prosperous Zimbabwe was not in vain. We shall forever remember your spirited efforts towards entrenching the rights of the disabled, disadvantaged persons, as well as your contribution to the attainment of our independence, freedom, and democracy. My dear brother, Joshua Tekemalinga, I say to you, daughter, la la mokutula, kawe la makakawe, zora murugare gambara magamba. Rest in eternal peace, our champion of the disadvantaged. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you.